All right, what is up, guys? How's everyone doing out there? We got Christina. What up, Christina? Lindsay and Evan. We got Karen Townsend entering the waiting room as we speak over here. We got Chef Courtney. What up, Courtney? Love that apron. Margaret and Craig. All right, we got Chef Scott Miller in the house. What up, Scott? And so today we got an awesome class prepared for you guys. We're going to be making a uh, boya base. And so does anyone know the origin of boya base? Drop it in the chat. Let me know what is the origin of boya base. We got Elaine is loving the cocktails and the Taylor Swift over here. Nice. She's very excited about that. And Catherine says leftovers. So I left I left the question kind of open ended to see what you guys would say. Uh, the origin, the boy base does come from the ocean out there. Yeah, it comes right from the ocean. But yeah, so basically it's a stew, right, that uh, comes from French fishermen. And the story goes that they would sell the good parts, right? They'd sell the best fish, they'd take home what was left, and they would kind of cook it in this spicy stew, right? And that ended up being uh, boyabase. It seems like a lot of the great recipes come from, you know, what was left over and what they could make do with it to make it super delicious. And so it's it's a really fun one. I first learned how to make boyabase when I was a chef up in New Hampshire, right? So if you guys have heard me talk about that restaurant I worked at called the Balsams, it was this crazy, crazy resort. We'd serve like five, 600 people a night and they had a really unique style, right? In today's restaurant, you go in and you'll have like the meat section and the fish section and the, the guy working the fish station will pick up all the dishes that are on the fish menu, right? So the scallops and whatnot. At this one, it was so busy and the kitchen was so big that one chef just did one dish that night, right? And so some nights I'd work the Boyave station and so every order that came in, I had to cook like this, this much salmon, this many mussels. And if you lost count, you're totally screwed, right? And so you had to stay up ahead on everything and it was it was a really delicious dish it was a really cool dish just to learn how to make because it's a what, the reason why i really like learning how to make this dish is because there's so much broth to it right that it really allows you as a home chef to develop your palate really well right because if you don't season it correctly along the way you get done and you kind of just end up with tastes like tomato and broth and seafood right but what we want is that magic to happen right? And so if you guys are ready to make an awesome boya base stew, can I see a thumbs up out there? Perfect. We got Lindsay and Evan's little, little pooch over here. Look at this guy. And so first thing, if you haven't made your cocktail already, go ahead, make that cocktail or save it for dinner. I'm enjoying a little, uh, a loft white wine over here. We're going to be doing a class with them. Or actually, we're doing an in-person dinner. So anyone coming to that, I hope to see you guys there. That's going to be awesome. We got Mitch and Diane are pumped. We got a lot of people with some wine out there. It's very important to be drinking some wine in the studio. We also got Chef Abby over here. All right, testing out. Say, what up, Chef Abby? Might be our new production intern at Truffle Shuffle. You guys can hit it up in the chat. Tell them if you think working at Truffle Shuffle is cool. What is the class with the winery? Uh, we're doing a dinner with Aloft and Dark Matter with the Mondavi uh, granddaughters down in November. So you'll see an email. I'm supposed to taste all the wines and tell them what will go good with it. I've been working on that part. It's taken a while. You know, I've been really savoring that moment of it. All right. What up, Gene and Jane? Thank you guys for being here. So the first thing we got to do here, go ahead and make sure you got your mise en place. Make sure you got your ingredients. Uh, I'll go through our ingredients real quick together. And uh, we got our herbs. You can put all the herbs and the vegetables in one location. Call it your prep station, right? We got some beautiful fennel. And we got some nice tomatoes over here. So that's going on the left. We got our garlic, shallot, lemon on the left. For our prep station and then we got our seafood 
We'll get into the seafood in a little bit, so we want to keep that keep that chill down. The truffle salt, and then I got our saffron uh, in white wine blooming. If you guys got your saffron already blooming, hold it up to the camera, okay? I want to see how it's working, looking. All right, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, some would say maybe good as hell. Okay. All right, perfect. Look at that beautiful red color we got out there. Chisholm and Scott nailing it. Margaret and Craig. I think you guys had a little extra stuff on there. I think they doubled the stuff. We're giving it some more. Perfect. Kevin Morrell looking great. Team launch. Oh. All right, we got Michelle and Erica over here. Perfect. Chef Brenda. Look at that. Almost looks like it could be Jello. All right, we got Chef Courtney crushing it. All right, we got Chef Jen over here too. Perfect. Dave and Cordell looking really nice. Love that bowl. Banging it, nailing it. All right, awesome. I got to see Lizzo at uh, Bottle Rock a couple weekends ago. Anybody go to Bottle Rock here? I think some of you guys heard this story, but I got to, I went and saw them. And then I met, anybody know the fighter Nate Diaz from the UFC? Somehow I literally ended up hanging out with Nate Diaz and I broke up a fight, which means that I stopped someone from getting literally destroyed. And so it was very interesting. And so we got a little, uh, the Nona sauce is the tomato sauce. There should be one jar labeled tomato sauce. Let me know if you have that. If you don't, the best uh, tomato sauce you have at home, I'll show it to this board cam right here. Well, bam. Perfect. And then we got a little Dijon egg yolk. That's going to be for our, our aioli. And you guys want to have just a little uh, olive oil, maybe a cup to two cups of olive oil and canola oil on hand. Okay. So with that, we'll jump right into our prep here. We got some uh, serious knife work to go through. And again, try your best to keep the seafood in the fridge for as long as you can. So first, we'll go to our garlic. And we'll need about three cloves of garlic. Garlic really makes a dish like this. And then while we, it's stewing, I got a cool video we're gonna check out with uh, Julia Child and Jacques Pepin of them making boy base together. Jacques Pepin has a book called The Apprentice. So if you guys like like chef biographies, it's a really good one. He was the, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but he was the chef to the president for a little bit. I'm not sure which one, but one of them. All right. So garlic, we're going to cut the root end off, right? Push that to the right. And then we're going to cut this guy right in half. And then I like to peel it back. And we'll kind of get our halves going first. We got Bob and Cindy launch. I think they already got their prep work done. As good as good CPAs do, let me tell you. Okay, get ahead for tax season. Not getting behind this year. All right, cutting this guy in half. You guys got any other good culinary book recommendations out there? Maybe we should start a Truffle Shuffle book club. And then I'm just gonna go through and slice this as fine as possible, okay? And I know you guys are professionals, but basically there's two ways you can slice something really fine. One is the rocking motion, okay? 
Whenever I'm doing garlic, sometimes I like to just get my hands a little wet because sometimes the garlic can get so sticky. The other is using the tip, right? And either one isn't better. And what you guys will see, like if you're to go into a kitchen and just watch chefs cook, they they adjust how they cut stuff so your hands don't get super tired, right? Because if you do just one way and then you adjust it, you're using a slightly different set of muscles. All right, we got some really good ones. Kirsten Heber says, Jacques Pepin was a personal chef to Charles de Gaulle. Nice. Kirsten, was Charles de Gaulle a president? That is my next question here. Is that deep? Blood, Bones, and Butter by Gabriella Hamilton. Have you ate at her spot, Margaret? Yeah. I've heard it's really good. Radically Simple by Roseanne. Yeah, look at all these recommendations. This is awesome. I read a lot of books. I listen to them on audiobook, actually. Audiobook, or I'm a big fan of the Take a Book, Leave a Book libraries. Yesterday, I found a book in a take a book, leave a book library called uh, The Pilgrimage by Paul Cola. Probably saying his name wrong, but uh, he's a guy that wrote The Alchemist. I'm excited to read that. I really liked uh, Gordon Ramsay's biography, too. I mean, he had a pretty crazy upbringing. He, as a kid, he literally lived in a different place every two weeks. His dad was just like a crazy alcoholic, very abusive. His brother battled addiction for a very long time. And then he started cooking and, you know, just that act of being able to do something and do it right for the first time in your life just captivated him. Grant Atkins' book was awesome. So Margaret and Craig and Grant Atkins' book, do you remember, you might not, but you, you might, do you remember in the book where he talks about when he worked at the French Laundry? And there, there's that scene where there's that one guy at the French Laundry that worked harder than anybody else and would literally sweat while cutting artichokes. So that was David Carrier. So that's who I worked for in Georgia. He's also the one in my Facebook profile picture. All right, we got our garlic done. If we got your garlic done, show it off to the camera. All right, real quick, and then we're gonna cruise directly into our shallots. Susan and Scott, nailing it. Chef Elaine, I can see that you are loving that cocktail over there. Don't forget to stay hydrated, okay? Very important part of this process. All right, Kevin, surgical precision over there. Very nice. Chef Kirsten, nailing it. Kirsten, you never told me if Charles de Gaulle is a president or not. It, it sounds presidential, I'll tell you that. All right, so for our shallot, we're gonna cut the tip off, right? He was the president of France. And then I think Jacques Pepin was a president, was a chef for a president in the US. I gotta look this up. And then we're going to cut this shallot in half. And there's a couple ways. This is a very long shallot to properly hashé something. Okay. I was going to say it sounded like a French president, but I don't want to jump to any conclusions here and upset anybody. And so one way, like Tyler likes to do it, uh, the very like a uh, traditional way, which is where you cut lengthways. I've never been a fan of this, but it does work. So that's, and then from there, you'll basically slice down as thin as you can, leaving the root intact. You ever seen this, Chef Abby? And then you cut down 
And this gives you a good starting to the hash egg. The other way is you can just cut down really finely, right? And then cut down and I think it makes the same size cut and it's faster. And then from here, we'll just run our knife through it. Have you guys ever heard the term cut twice, measure once? Cancel. Measure twice, cut once. Have you guys ever heard that? So you know it's actually faster? Just cutting. Yeah, don't measure, just cut. You gotta be precise, right? If you don't mess it up, technically, it's actually faster. It's something I thought about. Not many people agree with me on it. But, you know, once you develop that skill set, if you just, you know, just cut, get that mental measurement going on. All right, nice little hash head here. Pop these guys in a bowl. Jack Pepin has a really funny story about preparing a salt baked fish and basically being in communication with the pilot and he timed it so that as soon as the plane left, he would put the fish in the oven, but the plane kept having issues. So he kept having to take the fish out. All right, we got our garlic, our shallots, well, bam. And then next we're gonna dice our fennels and tomatoes here. And we'll do kind of a smaller dice on this. So with the fennel, I'm gonna cut just a little bit of the top off. And then I'm gonna cut it in half. Well off. And then, you see that root section there? All right, Chef Susie, we're gonna cut this out. So kind of at a V, right? And then pop it out. So, same thing here. You can stand it up and cut it out too. And then we'll, we'll do this almost like you're cutting an onion. So that same kind of vertical slice, horizontal slice. And then we're gonna go down and we're trying to get a small dice here, right? Nice small dice. That way, this cooks quickly in our stew. What you don't want is fennel that's not cooked and fish that's overcooked, right? All right, Chef Scott, you're doing great. Lindsay, great knife work over there. Evan, amazing job on that supervision. Absolutely crushing it. Over there, we got Gabe and Cordell. Great job, guys. Jacques Pepin refused to be the chef to JFK. Huh. I wonder why. All right, putting our fennel on a plate here. What songs can you guys think of that uh, mention the word bass in them? We already played all, all about that base, so we, we got that one. All right, the fennel, next. Pretty good song, though. Once you got the fennel done, just give me a quick 
wine swirl out there. Also, did you guys see the uh, coffee that we put in the kits? This is from uh, a mom entrepreneur. Her name's Norma. And she was the one that got us the deal to get into Whole Foods. And now she's starting her own little business. You can find it online. Great for gifting. Highly encourage you to go support her. Coffee's fantastic. Huh? She makes it all by, by hand. So we bought a bunch from her. And we put it in the kits for you guys. It's like your happy meal. Right? Little toy. Little gift in there. So I think there's a little card in there too. If you need to find it. But please enjoy that. It's all from Norma. And then... Uh, Abby's going to find her Instagram and drop it in the chat for you guys. Next, we're going to do our tomatoes. So cut the top off. Cut them in half. Right? Rinse and repeat here. And then horizontal slice. And then we're gonna slice down. And then pop it right onto the plate. You guys wanna know one of my favorite, favorite cookbooks of all time? One time I was with my mom and we were at Goodwill um, shopping for something because we were always on a budget, you know what I mean? And I found this book there and it was, it was literally like a how-to guide on being a short order line cook. No joke. And... It almost seems like a, like a, like one of those books they, or things they do to like make fun of something. What's that called? Not sarcasm, but uh, starts with the S. Satire. Yeah, it seemed like satire, and it was like, it talked about like if you dice something, put your container that you're cutting in the sink, and just push everything off the cutting board, and it literally listed all these like hacks that like short order line cooks do to be able to get stuff done faster and i found it and then i got a job as a short order line cook making breakfast at this spot in georgia and i used to use the techniques out of that book and the chef would be like where'd you learn how to do that and i'd be like oh i just thought of it he's like wow that's super smart but really i got it out of that book all right so we got all of our knife work done over here most of it, right? We got to do the herbs. Our fennel, tomatoes, shallot, garlic. You know a recipe is going to be good when you start off chopping all sorts of stuff. So next we'll go into the basil. And we want to go through, pick out your biggest leaf. And then we're going to pick the rest of these leaves. And we're just going to get a nice chiffon out on these. Stacking them up. And then what's important here is you just want to make sure that you put them into a container and then a wet paper towel on top. Then we're gonna go through nice, they don't need to be the thinnest slices, but just thin whole slices, right? Basil's an incredible herb. 
one of a kind, amazing aroma. It's awesome chopped, it's awesome and sausage, it's awesome whole leaves. And then next we're gonna chop this oregano. Oregano is an interesting herb. I don't think it gets enough love. You know what I mean? And my high school kids used to try to sell oregano like it was marijuana. That's about the most love I've heard oregano gets. I never was a part of that. Believe it or not. All right, so we're going to pick all of the uh, seeds and stems off of this oregano here and get into a nice little pile. One kid even, like, bought some and then got caught and then didn't get into trouble because technically he had just overpaid for oregano, which is not a crime in most states. All right, and then we'll take this, chop it up. And then yeah, Abby's got some info in the chat there for you guys, at Norma Safi. I guess we've got a code going on, shuffle, shuffle 10. this into a little bowl here here for us because we are doing a good amount of prep. All right, and then that's officially us on step. We finished step one, we're rolling into step two. Rolling into step two, we want to um, Make sure that after we do the fish and the shrimp that we clean everything down really well, okay? So, great job, guys. And... We can start with the shrimp here.
And so we're going to leave these in the shell, but just get them nice and dry. And then we'll do the seafood. So we have some beautiful tuna, some beautiful salmon, some beautiful shrimp here for you guys. So just want to make sure everything gets nice and dry. Give it that love, that love, kindness, attention, care. And then once you guys get that seafood done, let me just see a quick thumbs up out there. Jennifer's crushing it. All right, cool. So we're gonna dice the fish up and then we're gonna make this aioli. And the size that we dice it is, uh, you know, we're going for about two inch pieces. And you'll just have to be creative with the piece of fish that you have. And we just want really kind of think about like getting them somewhat in a similar amount of protein to your shrimp, right? So for this guy, I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to cut these into kind of a little bit bigger than one inch pieces. And then for the salmon, if you don't like the skin, okay, you can remove that. We don't have to remove it for this. So for anyone that doesn't like it, so I'm gonna cut this in half and I'll show you how to take the skin off. But if you're cool with it, I recommend leaving it on because we can get it a little crispy. And we're just gonna take this and cut it into, again, similar size pieces as our tuna here. nice fish size chunks and then there's two ways to take the skin off you can either go from the top like this it's always best if you have a sharp knife and you're kind of doing little little cuts here I'll show it to you again. so going from the top little cuts if you have like a fillet knife that can help and you can tell there's really nice fish because it's nice and fatty all right, and then we're going to cut similar size pieces. And then again, paper towels, getting nice and dry. And then clean off your knife, clean off your cutting board. Flip it over if you need to.
one of the things that we would do at the French Laundry that I thought you guys would like is we would make uh we would make like a seafood stew like a French stew but then just use the broth from that to make sauces and bases right so we'll talk to that a little bit more here and so next let me see a quick thumbs up out there if you guys are ready to make this aioli perfect so I think a good amount of you guys have made aioli with us before right about 50 50 Courtney is getting ready over there if you guys see this yeah preloading amazing And then we got a couple people that are still catching up. So don't worry. I'll kind of talk through these steps here, give you a little bit of time, get caught up. And so um, what we're going to do next is get a bowl. I recommend kind of a larger bowl than a smaller bowl. So I got this guy here. We'll need our whisk. Okay. And then if you guys want to, you can hold the whisk up here. The number one way you can fail doing this, okay? Michelle and Erica, you can keep the, the shrimp in the shell. So the number one way you can fail doing this is by um, having one of those wisps that has uh, like six wires, right? You want you want a lot of wires and you want the thinner ones. So if you got options out there, okay? Get, get, get the wisp that has the most. Scott, that's perfect, okay? You guys see Scott's whisk, amazing. Also, a reason why Scott will not fail is because of that apron, okay? Look at that. Yeah, can't fail because of that apron. I gotta get one of those. Um, so we're gonna need our whisk. We're gonna need a bowl. And then we're gonna need the saffron. You're gonna want a little strainer like this, okay? Nice little guy like this. And then we're going to need the egg yolks. Well, bam. We're going to need the Dijon mustard. Double bam. And then we're going to need that champagne vinegar. So you can go ahead and get the champagne vinegar. The egg yolks. And the Dijon mustard in your bowl you might need a little spatula like this right so go ahead get it all in there you'll mix that together and so basically the the vinegar is for flavoring it also uh, thins it out a little bit, which makes it easier to make the emulsification. The egg yolks, right, and the olive oil are your your things you're trying to emulsify, right? And then the mustard is what's called the fencing agent, right? It's the thing that binds the two together. So give that a little mix, and then I like to just whisk it until it gets lightly frothy. And then we're going to add uh, about a teaspoon of shallot. You can eyeball that. We're going to take that lemon, okay, and we're going to zest the lemon. And so we'll zest the lemon right into the bowl. I love the smell of lemon zest. And then one nice sprinkle of that Bolognese truffle salt, okay? One nice sprinkle of our Bolognese truffle salt. And 
And then with another little bowl, we're just going to strain out the threads of our saffron. Keeping that white wine. We can potentially use it later. You can use it in another recipe. All right. And then we'll add half of the saffron threads to this. You can use your fingers. You can also use a spoon. At this stage, it is basically like dye, right? All right, nice little whisk. And then we're gonna very slowly drizzle in our olive oil for this, okay? You guys will need, um, we'll, we'll start with a half cup and then be able to go from there. If you want it a little thicker, you can get a little thicker, but a half cup should work really well for this. And so the very, very most important part of this entire process is this very first drop, okay? You don't want to splash a bunch in there, okay? You just want that very, very first drop and then whisk that in. And then you can add your next one, your next one, and then if you feel like it's not coming together, you can stop, really whisk, hit the edges. This is where you're going to have your sous chef come in and give you a hand. And basically we want this just thick enough that it can stick to bread, right? than your traditional aioli but just just thick enough okay I'm gonna add just a little bit more here Once you guys get yours done, if you want to hold it up to the camera, okay, the whole, the whole bowl, show it off. We want to see some love out there. All right, Jen, that's looking really good. All right, team launch, nailing it. Amanda and Ben, perfect. Scott Miller, very nice. All 
so you'll just adjust the seasoning of this lightly with a little truffle salt. Alright, thank you, Chris. Very nice. Scott, that's looking great. Chef Lane, perfect. Lindsay and Evan, that's looking really good. Jennifer says, I made this this before in a metal bowl and it came out metallic. Any thoughts on why that happened? You know, sometimes when it comes to stuff that is metal, like uh, if you have a metal bowl, let's say you cleaned it, with a metal scrubby and then put it away there is little metal flakes that do come off right and so sometimes maybe there's just a little bit of that that does come off um and can get into the 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 food i think they say like there's like actually aluminum trace particles that can get up to your brain from the some of the food we eat so i don't know that could be that could be a, a reason for it when you're when you're whisking um but food can take on all sorts of different kind of like little nuances, you know. Sometimes I think about like if you have seafood and like the difference between it sitting out on the counter for like 20 minutes, it, it literally will change the, the flavor of it. All right, this will pop into a little bowl. And you can keep it in the fridge or just set it, set it aside. Congratulations on nailing it with this aioli. Take care, guys. And then Tyler might be hopping on in a little bit to show off his new baby. And then if yours tastes super delicious, okay, drop it in the chat, let me know. Give yourself some love on this one. All right, next, we are on step one of how to cook. Team Launch says, taste delish. Let me know if you guys need a couple of minutes to grab some wine. Okay. You raise your hand. If you're ready to rock, take a thumbs up out there. I right, think we need some people that need to grab some wine. So I got a cool little promo. This isn't the final edit of it, but I wanted to show it to you guys. We're doing a class with um, Butcher Box and ButcherBox is a really awesome company in the space and they do, they have like 440,000 subscribers. They do like $600 million a year. And I listened to an awesome podcast with the CEO as I was driving into work and I was like, how do I get a hold of this guy? And I sat down and went through my Rolodex and I found someone that uh, I had uh, was at Union Square Ventures, which is like a VC firm, and the CEO of ButcherBox had pitched them like 10 years ago. And I was like, hey, can you put me on the phone with ButcherBox? And literally 12 minutes later, I was in an email with the CEO of ButcherBox, and he was like, hey, I've done Truffle Shuffle, and Truffle Shuffle is awesome. We'd love to chat. And so we're it's a company I really admire and how they've been able to do things. And so we're working with them and doing our very first uh, partnership. We made this 
dope video I'm going to show you guys. It's a little bit different than what we've normally done. Um, and we got our very first class coming up with them and looking for it to be something more consistent and looking to potentially start working with them on partnering on the proteins that we put into the kits. So I'll show you guys this. I got to uh, back it up. All right, we're starting it over. Just kidding. So we're doing that. It's a shopping list class. Um, and Eileen will drop a link in the chat. It'll be pretty cool. We got, as of right now, there's 700 people signed up. So if you like the Trouble Shovel classes that are absolute insanity, all right, hope to see you guys there. And then you can buy the ribs from their, their site. Um, all right, cool. So we're officially in our how to cook. And so you want to grab your Uh, about 10 or 12 inches, right? You got to think kind of the amount of broth we have, the vegetables, everything like that. And it doesn't hurt to go bigger than smaller for this, right? So if you want to, you could do this in a blanche pot, right? And so if you guys want to show off the pans that you got out there, team launch, that's perfect. All right. Chef Eileen or Abby, you guys want to help me spotlight these pans? Let's see what you guys are working with out there. Scott, that'll work great. Christina, that's perfect. Susan and Scott looking really good as well. Okay. Kathleen and Joe, that'll be perfect. Oh man, look at that guy. Lisa, nailing it. All right, Michelle and Erica looking great. All right, cool. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get our pan and we're going to start heating up. We're going to shoot for kind of medium high heat with this, right? And then you can grab your shellfish, bring it right over to you. And then we're going to start with the canola oil, right? And then we want to season our seafood here. Look at all this goodness. Whenever you have this much goodness, it's hard to, hard to not make something delicious.
And so you want to add enough oil to lightly coat the bottom of the pan, okay? And we're going to let it, let it really heat up. Seafood is notorious for sticking. Um, my mom hates cooking with non-stick pans because it always sticks, but one of the little tricks is just enough oil, make sure everything gets patted down, right? And then you got to be patient once we put it in. Okay, so we got this guy here. We're gonna go ahead and we can, you can either place the shrimp or the fish first. And so I'm gonna do the shrimp and I'll do the shrimp. The, the middle of the pan is gonna be hotter. The shrimp have the shell, so they're easier to move. So we're gonna go around with the shrimp here, right? around with the shrimp and you can kind of put them close together around with the shrimp have you guys ever heard elvis's song of the shrimp i always think about that Elvis seems like he'd be a very interesting guy to hang out with. Okay, and then in the middle, I'm gonna add a touch more oil to mine. You're like, I might need a little bit more room, but we're gonna make it work. And I'm gonna do the tuna. And I'm gonna use a spoon and push my turn back All right, and then we can show you guys up close and personal how we're looking. All right, we got our shrimp. I got the tuna in there right now. I'm gonna get a good color on that, and then I'm gonna make some room for the salmon. Give these guys a flip. And then I'm gonna lightly flip the shrimp and then pop those guys out because they cook fast. And you can wait to add the shrimp, but I love, love the flavor that comes when you caramelize the shells. Absolutely love it. One of my favorite things in the whole world. And so you guys see, because we're being patient, because we added enough oil, nothing sticking. Wow. How's that smell, Abby? It smells, smells good already, huh? Amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna pop my shrimp out, and this is this is kind of like uh, Jason's chef tip here. All right, so I'm popping my shrimp out, and then I'm going to add just a touch more oil, and then we're going to add the salmon. Okay. And remember, we're just getting color on this stuff. We don't want to cook it through yet.
Oh, snap. This is going to be incredible. I right, have a looking on the chat. Okay, I'm taking my tuna out. And then I'm just I'm letting the salmon what's called sleep, right? I'm just not gonna mess with it for a minute or two, and I'm looking at the bottom of it, right? And I'm trying to see, hey, is there a nice golden brownness on this? And like this one, I can already tell. So if I try to gently push it and it moves, that I know I can flip it. So, right, got some good color, good color, right? Oh, if your pan, if, you, if it's super dark on the bottom, it's too hot. Okay. If everything's sticking, it's probably too hot. Okay, so I got these flipped. I'm going to let them cook and then I'm going to pop them off. All right. And then I'll talk through our next steps here. So right now, we're on step three. Once we get all the shellfish out of the pan, we'll be on step three of, we'll be on step four of how to cook. And we're going to add the fennel, shallot, and garlic to the pan. And we're going to let that cook for a minute or two. Okay. So I'm going to take this fish out and I want to see how you guys are looking out there. Okay. Whether you got it out of the pan or if you're getting some nice, beautiful color on it. You guys want to hold that up to the camera. We want to see how it's looking. All right, Courtney, crushing it, beautiful. Susan, amazing. Elaine, crushing it. Jen looking great. Christina looking really nice. Lisa, that's looking amazing. Jennifer, stunning. Chef Scott Miller is still crushing it with that apron. All right. And so... At this stage, I got my saute pan here. We're on, I'm gonna kick it back up to medium heat and we're gonna go in with our shallots. Garlic. And fennel. We'll hold off on the tomatoes for now. 
We're going to use those to kind of deglaze the pan. If the cup will get in there, that's totally fine. Okay. And then we'll get a wooden spoon. And we just want to lightly cook that for a minute or two. It gets nice and translucent. And this is us building that kind of base of flavor here, right? And so inside here we have the shallots, fennel, and garlic. Off to the side here, we've got our tomatoes our chopped basil, our uh, oregano, and then if you have it, we also got some nice crusty bread here. That we use to enjoy this dish with. And so after about a minute or two, once it gets nice and translucent, we're gonna go ahead and we'll glaze this pan and we're gonna add your saffron wine. your saffron threads, your tomatoes. Okay, and this is where it's gonna start smelling awesome. And so you wanna cook that wine all the way down and then we're gonna add our tomato sauce. And the oregano. And then we got one chef with us that joined a little bit late. Chef Maria, don't worry. And a little bit here will be this fish will stew. And I'd love to call you directly and walk you through the steps that are needed for this. I'm sorry you didn't get those reminder emails. We can take a look at that together and see if there's an issue there. And so what we're going to do is cook this all the way down, okay? Marie, if you'll uh, direct message me your phone number, I'll give you a call in just a second here. So the white wine all the way down, right? And so Chef Lisa, we are on uh, step five, cruising directly into step six on the how to cook section. And so I'm going in with our tomatoes. And yeah, this is where it's going to start smelling really awesome. So in with the tomatoes, also really make sure that you're hitting the edges, okay? The edges of all this goodness. All right, in with that oregano. And with oregano, you know, add, you might not need all of it, okay? So you, it's, you can always add more, right? You can never take away. That's a life lesson that you learn in the kitchen. Okay. And so I haven't used the broth yet. We're very close to adding the broth. All right, and then once you got your base done, we're gonna go ahead and 
gently lay the fish down nice and evenly here. And we'll end up using uh, two cups of broth, but everyone's pan's slightly different. So you might need a little bit more, you might need a little bit less. So if you add everything to the pan and then add the broth, then you know you got the perfect amount. This is what we call redneck math. Eyeball measurements. And if you got any of the goodness Okay, in the bottom of this, these bowls, add that to this as well. And get some, get some pictures of this too. I mean, man, this is going to be awesome. You guys are crushing it out there. All right. So now I'm going to add my broth here. So the broth we sent you guys is vegetable broth. Yeah. That was got a good neutral base of flavor. Oh, wow, that's going to be awesome. If you were doing this again, you could make shrimp broth, fish, fish stock and whatnot. You have to really know what you're doing there to make it right. And it's one of those things where it's like, even if you nail it, is it a better product than just nice chicken stock? or nice vegetable broth, you know, it's a give or take. Okay. So I'll show you guys mine here. So I got everything in there. I got the broth in there and now I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat back up. Okay. And you want this on a simmer. We already got some good, cook on the shrimp and fish so it's not like we need to hammer this to get everything cooked all the way through we get it to a simmer so fish cooks you want to cook fish around like 120 to 130 and even that's like a little high protein coagulates at 140 a simmer is around 180 so you want that sweet spot right between a simmer right and the fish cooking perfectly so um, I'm bringing this this up and after it simmers for about five minutes, then you can start to taste it, okay? And then I like to go around the edges, anything we got there. All right, so quick recap on our recipe here. We're officially on step eight, where we're gonna let this simmer for five to 10 minutes until the fish is cooked through and the flavors have developed. And then I got a cool little video for us to check out while this is simmering. I'm going to wait till it gets to the bubbles here and then we'll go check that out. While we're doing that, you guys can take your bread, right? Get it, get it toasted up if you want to. And then we'll add that basil at the very, very, very end. Okay. I encourage you to take the bread, get a couple pieces after about three or four minutes, right? And seize and use the bread to taste that broth. And if you guys got any questions, drop them in the chat right now for me, okay? I can usually tell when you guys have questions. I've also learned how to tell when couples are arguing about the recipe. And it's always, the wife is always correct, okay? I think I've told you guys this before, but when, when we're doing the classes, Sometimes people will unmute and they'll ask a question, right? And they're like, what do we do with the salmon? I always know they're like cooking and they, they are frantically worried about how the dish is going to come out. Right now, sometimes people unmute and they say, Hey, quick question. 
every single time that person is asking to prove their partner wrong about something, right? Every time. And so the basil at the very end, and then Jen, we already got the saffron in there. So go ahead and uh, get those saffron threads in your bras. All right, so we got this looking amazing. Lean in, give it a little smell. Chef Maria, if you could please drop your number. I can also find it, but if you just DM me your number, we'll do a quick little FaceTime, get caught up together. Okay. And then while I'm gone, you guys can go ahead, toast up that bread, do it in a pan, do it in the oven, right? Do it on a grilled pan, get it nice and toasted. And then I'll still be here if you have any questions. We're gonna go check out how Jacques and Julia like to make their boya base. And so if you can see mine, I got it on a, on a light simmer, okay? Light, light simmer. We're not braising short ribs over here, okay? So super light, very light. Okay. All right, you guys are doing amazing. Great work out there. So we're gonna see how Jacques and Julia make their boy base and then we'll come back and we will spread our aioli on that bread and start to enjoy this dish. We're gonna do a wonderful Mediterranean type fish soup. And this is the kind of a soup that you would make anywhere in the country, even in Kansas City. And so any place that you can get some fish, or you can yeah. even make it and put potatoes in rather than fish. It's the principle that counts. Even with salmon, right? Yes, because we happen to have some. So we start with olive oil on that one. Mm -hmm. All right. So some scallion. Scallions aren't usual in a traditional soup like this, but you don't need to be traditional. No. The thing is to make a wonderful we soup. We will put some onion, garlic in have, there. And proportions aren't very important either. That's probably about half a big onion. And here's some garlic. This is, we're beginning to smell Mediterranean. It smells like this, the streets of Marseille. Well, I'm going to cut some tomato for you there. And I'm not going to seed them or anything. No, I wouldn't seed them or do anything there. So, I mean, you know, it's more country style. Yeah, this is kind of a very country style. We will see soup. about two cups of tomato. It would be fun. Are they cooking for you and me or cooking for? Well, we're cooking six. for about six people. Okay. Something with these things. There's so many things you don't need a recipe for if you've seen it done. And then you work it out yourself. I mean, some people will come up and say, Oh, the recipe says two tablespoons of tomato paste, and I've only got a teaspoon. I can't make the recipe. Of course, you can make the recipe. Just put something else in or leave it out. Okay. And I'm going well, to. Well, you might prep the fish. Yeah, I'll prep the fish and I'll strain some fish stock here with the head and the bone of the fish. So we don't lose anything. Now, one thing, Jack, very often people don't have fish stock or there isn't something around. I use chicken stock. You don't like that idea. Well, but I think no, it needs, I, it, but it needs some strength to it. Yes, what you could do also is to use one of those bottles of, uh, of clam juice, clam juice and happen to like. add, add water to it because it's no. a bit strong, you know? But the idea so a chicken stock is quite mild. You have to have something with strength in it. So we would call that a possibility for the last resort. Well, this is for your soup. In fact, I wanted to taste this. See, the stock is just plain. It has a nice fish shape. It has no salt, nothing in it. So. And all you did was just to boil up. That's it. It's about, just about 20 minutes. It yeah. couldn't be easier. Yes, the fish truck doesn't take too long to do, as opposed no. to the meat stock. Mm -hmm. Shall we put wine in it? A little wine in? Yes, like one cup. Mm. It's exactly one cup. You don't have to have wine in it, but it, I, I think, think it's nice. Do. I like it. Should I put this? And this just has to simmer away. I think put the whole thing in, don't okay. you? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. And then we can season it, salt, pepper. If you want to put, uh, we put the saffron in it. And I'm just going to, I think, just about a 
pinch about like that. Don't yes, you think that's... I like it, so I put more, but... Well, but I have especially... to come out more, because I don't like a medicinal taste. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. I'll give you a little bit of fresh thyme. Good. In there. We have some tarragon also, which has a kind of anise taste and goes well in the south, but maybe we'll put that at the end. Yeah. We'll have more taste. Yes, okay. See if it needs it. That's a good idea. And shall we put salt and pepper in it? Yeah. I think we... It'll need it. And it doesn't really have to boil that long. But After you want it to get, comes you to want a boil, get the flavor out of all these things. You want the good flavor out of it. And during that time, of course, you can prepare your fish. Because the advantage of this, you would prepare your fish, but you would not cook it. You would cook it just at the last moment when you're ready to serve your guest so that it doesn't get overcooked. And I think one inch pieces would be about good. Here we are. The salmon give it another color. And in that case here, the skin of the red snapper is left on, but of course it's scaled. You know, we took the scale out of it. Shall we leave the skin on the salmon or take it off? Take it out, I think. Okay. I don't think it would be very nice. I, I wouldn't like to eat skin in, in, in a soup. Well, the, the skin of that is very fine, of, of the red right. snapper, you know. So here, shall we put another piece here? I think salmon is, is not at all usual. No. But this is not an oily salmon. This is very, a very fresh, nice salmon. And it's, it's okay. I mean, if you have leftover, okay. that type of soup lends itself to countless variation. If you have this, you put it. If you have another type of fish, you put another type of fish. Then we have some scallop, and we have those like butter clam. They call mm -hmm. them different golden clam and so forth. And now they are a bit available. If you don't have those, you put cherry and, stones and can, or oysters. And can go in with the shell. Yeah, well, I think we, we put that with the shell. I yeah. think so. Or you could, mus mussels would be very nice. Uh -huh. In other words, you put in what you have. So another five minutes, and then we'll put all of that in and finish it up with the sauce. Good. <laughs> Action. Action. <laughs> this, this is a pestle, and in the south of France, when they make a, a fish soup, they make this wonderful garlic sauce called a rouille, which is garlic and olive oil, and they pound it in a great big mortar like this. When we were living in France way back in 1949, we found this in the flea market in Paris, and my husband Paul had to carry it <laughs> about a mile. <laughs> See how heavy it is. Better him than ah, him than me. That's wonderful. Well, we're going to make it in a very good way that Jack has invented. Good. So you're going to give me a little bit of that stock oh, here. Yeah. We have a beautiful stock in there. And I put four or five cloves of garlic here. Peeled garlic. This is my day. Peeled garlic. A little more, is that I it? think a little more. And you want to put a pimiento in there, you said. I never did that. Yeah, well, it give gives it a, a nice beautiful color. color. Yes. And for the binding agent, you know, you can put a piece of bread in it, like this, or sometimes I put a piece of potato, I mean cooked potato. If this is nice. It'll like really bind with both yes, uh, potato and yes, bread. Yes, so we no. can put a piece of both in there, yeah. so we might as well use it. A little bit of cayenne, maybe. Not too much. Like this. Well, that's enough. I think we may need a little more juice, but we'll see. It goes this way. And maybe we can put that to cook now, you know? Because we're going to be ready as soon as the roux is ready. We put that directly in there, right? And now the olive oil. It's very, very important in making this garlic sauce that the garlic be completely pureed. Yes. So that you don't have a piece of it, but what is clever the way he has done it is putting the potato and the bread and so forth in it so that it really will puree. So what's in there, of course? And even a little bit of black pepper. Here we are. And as you see now, now it's thicker. Now That's it's thicker. perfect. I'm putting the rouille there, and I'll do some croutons for the rouille. How is the fish doing? Jenny? That's so almost done. You see how quickly this fish cooks. 
That's just, I would think they'll need just about a minute more. What do you think, Jack? Yes, it's getting really. You definitely don't want it overcooked. Just want to do it at the last moment. I well, think we should taste for salt pepper. Taste and, oh, yes. And what I wanted to give you is a little bit of the tarragon at the end. So about. It needs just a little bit more salt and pepper. Oh, here you are. Okay. I'll give you black pepper this time. All right. Then, of course, the rui the is going to give it a lovely taste. We put the rui directly on the bread. And you can prepare a lot of that ahead. There is a lot of garlic in it, and I love it. And sometimes also, people put a tablespoon or two of the rui into their plate of fish to thicken the soup, you know, at the table. Mm -hmm. And it's very nice too. So now we're ready to serve the soup, you think? Mm hmm You see how quickly that fish cooks. And you don't want it overcooked. It is a kind of fish stew, huh? You would mm -hmm. say it's stew as well as soup, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. That's lovely. That has the clams and everything in it. Yes. Mm. That should be about fine, right? Here. So we put a couple of rouille directly inside. Mm -hmm. And this thicken a little bit and a couple of extra one to go on the side. So we test it here. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want some of the rouille inside, yes? yes I love the, right way. the rouille in the soup. The right way mm. of doing it. Mm. It's delicious. I think this is, is one of the best soups you could find. Yes. Mm. Well, I hope you're going to do that soup for your friend, as Julia and I enjoy cooking it for you. Happy cooking. Bon appétit. Nice cooking with Good you, Julia. cooking with you. All right, I like cooking with you guys. Bon appétit. <laughs> All right, so we're pretty close here. So have you guys done the bread test yet? So you want to cut a little piece of this bread, all right, and dip it, dip it in and see how it is. It's going to be hot though, okay? So I'm turning my heat off. If you need to, okay, you can pull one of the pieces of seafood out and if it breaks apart it's cooked okay i got my crusty bread over here and so you can season this up like i was saying you can add a little bit of spice if you want to the number one way chefs add spice to something like this is Tabasco sauce. A little bit of vinegar, a little bit of spice, goes in instantaneously. And I, I'm telling you, this is what we did at the French Laundry. This is what we did in Georgia. This is what we did in New Hampshire. It's just perfect, right? It's unbelievably hard to beat that level of delicious chili spice that you can add to something like this. Apparently, it takes 50 years to make a bottle of Tabasco sauce. Um... All right, so I got my, my bowl here. We're gonna serve this up. Don't forget your Rui, right? There's another name for this. It's cool watching Julia and Jacques, huh? As we're like doing the same thing. We're like the next generation. We gotta try to get them on this show, or Jacques at least. All right, we're gonna go in the bowl. And you want to keep a good, healthy mix, okay, of the good stuff to the broth. So if you did most of the cooking, you get most of the good stuff. If you did most of the supervising, you get most of the broth. All right, I don't make these rules, but over at Kathleen and Joe's house, I, I'll let them divvy that up how they see fit. All right. So right in the bowl here, I'm 
and then a little bit of basil. And then you'll get a spoon and lather up right and then right in the bowl, okay? Right in the bowl. Look at that. For sure this is also keto, okay? I know that's a big concern of a lot of people. So I want to see how you guys are pumping up that boiler base out there. And so I see some people enjoying it. Get your wine, right? Sit down, enjoy this. In the place to be, DJ Jazzy Jeff, I want to see how you guys are pumping that base up. All right, I don't know if we can beat all about that bass. Yeah, here we go. We're back on track. All right, Chapelain, perfect. Wow, looking awesome. Check Jennifer, let's do that one more time. Oh, stunning. Look at that toasty bread. All right, we got Chapelain and Jane. I think I can smell it from over here. Beautiful, Karen. Vic and Chris looking awesome. Oh, Team One. Unbelievable. Great color on that. Jeff Courtney absolutely crushed it. I love the, 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 the recipe stand there. Jeff Cheryl and Judy. Oh, it's spilling a little bit. Oh! That's looking awesome. Morgan and Trent are devouring that. Alright, these guys are all about that base. No trouble. Okay. I'm bringing party back. Go ahead. I have my Christina, how we look at Christina? Beautiful kitchen. Lindsay and Evan, done. Megan Trainer, she, she's got some hits. Um, pulling up one thing here, I want to show you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy that boy base. Great job! You can make this with uh, pretty much all seafood, right? You can make it with mussels, clams. You just got to know how to cook them when they open up. You can do it with crab, right? Unlimited possibilities. What I was talking about earlier is basically, if you can imagine making this, but like maybe not with like whole pieces of fish, but with like lobster shells and shrimp shells, and then you drain that, and then that, that broth you can make a sauce out of. I used to make this sauce. It was called a spicy crab broth at the laundry, and it was unbelievably delicious it was like it was similar to this and then we would add paprika and then we'd add a little bit of cream and we would cook it down and we literally just serve that lobster artichokes and like that was that was it 
So I I hope you guys enjoy this. Thank you for cooking with me. You guys are amazing. Um, this on Father's Day we're doing a wagyu tasting, and we're doing a uh, fundraiser to help support Ukraine. We're doing this along with Chef Anna, and would love to have you guys be a part of it. All of the funds are going to help children that are from Ukraine and displaced by the war, and so. It's going to be kind of like a marathon cooking event. We haven't done anything like this before, but you can hop on to any portion that you want. So it's going to start out Ukrainian French toast. Then we're going to do a keep cake, right? Daruni and caviar. We're going to finish with the keep cake and then everyone will get access to join the Wagyu steak flight. And so it's all going to keep volunteer and we're doing this along with chef Anna. And so I would love to see you guys there. She is very passionate about this. All the money she makes on Chop Shuffle goes directly to help support Ukraine. And with what they just went through, I mean, it's crazy. We're on, it's like day 446 of this war. And so we just want to do our little part and help support her and her mission. And we'd love to see you guys there. Um, and everything that she makes is very delicious. So that doesn't hurt. So you guys are amazing. Please enjoy that. Um, yeah, on that product page, and I'll drop it right here. Bye, guys. Great job. Bon appetit.